Hello and welcome to lecture 23rd. In last module, we started discussing about the three dimensional flow through axial flow compressor. We realized the growth of boundary layer from both the walls along with the adverse pressure gradient that is what is we are imposing because of axial flow compressor. In combination with the tip leakage flow that is what is making our flow to be highly three dimensional near the end wall region. And when we say we are having highly three dimensional flow in that region, we need to take care of what all changes it is making. Mainly we have realized the axial velocity near these end walls that is what is going to change. And in order to do the compensation during our design purpose, we have introduced a parameter that is what we have defined as a work done factor. We have discussed there is something called blockage factor that is what different industry they are adopting for their initial stage of design. Then we started discussing about high the flow three dimensionality that is what is happening within our passage. And we realize because of presence of our adverse pressure gradient, we have the safe change that is what is at the entry and at the exit of my stage or say number of stages. If that is what is your case, we will be having our flow passage to be having three dimensional shape. It will not be parallel wall, but it will be inclined wall. One more parameter we realize that is what is the presence of centripetal action because of our rotation. We also have realized our blades that is what is having twist and that twist is because of change of radius. We can say at the entry and at the exit, we will be having our blade angles to be different. And that is what is giving the three dimensionality to my flow within the blade passage. And after that we started deriving the fundamental equation that is called radial equilibrium equation. Now based on our radial equilibrium equation we read out vertex energy equation and that is what we realized that we are using for analyzing our flow through axial flow compressor. This fundamental equations can be applicable to any kind of turbo machinery. Now, here in this case after deriving that we have done certain assumptions. The assumptions are we have considered our stagnation enthalpy to be constant throughout the span. We have assumed our axial velocity to be constant throughout the span and we have derived with Cw into R that is what is giving the free vortex formation that is what is happening and with that we say is a free vortex low. If we are having all these three conditions to be satisfied, we can say our radial equilibrium it is satisfied with. Then after we started discussing about what all are the alternative compared to our free vortex design. Because what we realize when we are adopting our free vortex design concept, our blade that will be having greater twist. At hub we are having larger delta beta and near the tip it will be having comparatively low delta beta. And that is the reason why it is giving high twist to my blade. And because of our aerodynamic constraint, because of our manufacturing constraint, we have come up or say uh, the researchers they have come up with some other adoption different methods. And those methods we have discussed as force vortex, constant reaction method, exponential method, we have discussed about constant alpha 2 method. We also have discussed our fundamental methods and there we have checked whether our radial equilibrium that is what is satisfied or not. If it is not satisfying say for the case of constant reaction design my radial equilibrium it is not satisfied and it says there may be possibility that what we are expecting in sense of pressure rise or efficiency that may not be achieved because my radial equilibrium it is not getting satisfied there. Now with all this background you can realize now we are able to do calculation for throughout the span what is happening. Let me recall again say we have discussed our blades say stator blade and rotor blade they are made up of number of aerofoils. 
this number of aerofoils they are being placed throughout my span it may be 10 20 maybe hundreds of aerofoils and all these aerofoils they are per performing particular work okay and that's what is responsible for what we are talking in sense of getting pressure rise at the outlet now after learning all these aspects so we can understand we have realized we have done our calculation for what will be the variation of my flow angle at the entry and what will be the variation of my flow angle at the exit and we have taken care of parameter called degree of reaction. Now after doing this very important aspect that is what will be coming into the picture that is what is the selection of our aerofoils. And in order to understand how do we select this aerofoil, the fundamentals of cascade mechanics that is what is very important. So, now in session 4, we will be discussing about the cascade aerodynamics. Okay. Now, let us move here. So, if we recall, we were discussing, say if we consider this is what is my entry of the compressor, we can say this is what is my exit of the compressor. And that exit that is what is connected with my combustion chamber. So, if you look at this full line that is what is representing my flow passage as some passage and we know this passage shape that is what is converging passage shape. Let us recall again what we have discussed for my fluid flow we need to have our continuity need to be satisfied at the entry and at the exit. Suppose if I consider I am having my density rho 1 my area is A1 and my axial velocity is Ca. At the exit, I will be having my density say rho 2, we will be having our area A2 and my axial velocity we are assuming to be constant. If that is what is your case, we realize for axial flow compressor, downstream of my stage we will be having rise of pressure. We can say when my pressure is rising, my density also will be increasing. If that is what is your case, and if I consider my axial velocity to be constant, my exit area will be coming say lower. So, compared to my inlet area, my outlet area will be coming to be lower and that is what is giving my converging passage. Now, let me consider I do not want to put my flow track, this is what is called flow track where I am arranging all my stages for axial flow compressor. Let me tell you again there is a specific reason behind using number of blades and number of stages. The purpose for adopting number of stages that is what is we are having limitation in sense of aerodynamics. When we are increasing our pressure rise per stage pressure rise to be large there may be chances for the flow to get separated from the blade and that is what we have defined as a stall. And that is the reason why my power stage pressure rise that is what is limited. If my power stage pressure rise it is limited means in order to achieve required pressure rise I need to go with the number of stages. Okay. So, here in place of having this kind of passage let me put my passage like this. So, if we are considering say original passage that is what we can say my mean diameter that is what is coming to be constant. So, it says constant mean diameter passage and here if you look at this dotted line, I say that is what is a constant tip diameter kind of track. Okay. So, we will be focusing on how this passage shape or how this flow track or flow passage we will be deciding because that is what is very important when we are doing our design for axial flow compressor. Because we do not know which stage exactly we are designing or we are asked to design for. Maybe I will be designing first stage, maybe I will be designing last stage. But to have this idea, we need to have certain dimensions and those dimensions that is what is based on my flow track dimension. Okay. So, let us look at this. So, if you look at here, this is what is Pratt & Whitney 4000 engine. You can say we are having say large size fan then it will be followed by this is what is my booster stage or we can say as LP spool or say LP compressor. Downside here this is what we can say as HP compressor. 
here we are having combustion chamber hp turbine and lp turbine so we know this is what is my two spool configuration now my hp turbine that's what will be rotating at the high speed and that's what my compressor hp compressor that will be rotating at the high speed now we have understood our fundamental equation for euler and what it says my work done or say my pressurizing capacity of the compressor that's what is depend on my peripheral speed or we can say it depends on my rotational speed if i consider i am having higher rotational speed you can understand we need to go with say it's slightly smaller diameter so that's the reason why my hp spool if you look at compared to my other spool dimensions say compared to this diameter this diameter that's what is coming to be lower now the question will come what is the reason why we are having this diameter to be larger again this lp compressor it is operating at low pressure but it may be generating high pressure that may be designed for high pressure ratio so in order to achieve that high pressure ratio we need to have our peripheral speed to be larger and we know our lp spool that's what will be rotating at low speed maybe 3000 rpm maybe 6000 rpm if that's what is your case in order to increase your peripheral speed your diameter need to be larger okay so now you can realize it is not because this kind of flow track that's what is giving good aesthetic look just understand the technicality in in this design there is a specific reason behind selection of this diameter just realize that part very important part here that's what is say this is what is called interconnecting duct so you can say my low pressure compressor that's what is connected with the high pressure compressor using this interconnecting duct okay so that is also very important component and that is also coming in the scope for design by the designers of axial flow compressors okay so you can realize say i need to have sudden change of my diameter from larger diameter to say smaller diameter that's what is one thing what flow that's what will be coming out from my lp spool that may be having some angularity it may be having some whirl component so before it will enter into hp turbine hp compressor we need to have you know flow to be managed systematically and this is what is my inter compressor duct okay now this is what is my land based power plant you can realize for land based power plant they are having that shape that's what is coming to be different here if you look at this diameter is coming to be large this diameter is small that's what we are expecting but at the same time here in this case if you look at this is what is having different shape compared to these two configurations let's move here this is what is say pratt and whitney f119 okay that's what is low bypass ratio engine so here for this case if you look at i'm having curvilinear shape here at the entry near the hub and if we look at here carefully say for first two stages i'm having constant tip configuration and then it will be moving downside this is what is my bypass duct if you look at my hp compressor you can realize that's what is having some kind of configuration where my tip diameter is coming to be constant okay now here this is if you look at this is what is say pratt and whitney 200 for that also if you look at carefully you can say for this case we are having our tip diameter that's what is almost constant and if you realize here my hub diameter they have maintained to be constant for hp spool so if you recall if you try to understand what all shapes you are getting for our flow track we will see we are having some configuration that's what is say constant tip diameter flow track we can have constant hub diameter flow track we can have constant mean diameter flow track and you know for high spool or you can say for high bypass ratio and low bypass ratio engines we may be having combination of constant tip and hub diameter we can have constant hub and tip kind of configuration so now you can understand we are having different kind of flow track configurations which are possible so we will be discussing what all are 
the advantages or where we will be using this kind of flow tracks they are having special purpose special reason behind the selection of this flow tracks okay now if you look at here say this is what is you can say constant tip diameter kind of configuration okay so at the entry what we are expecting we are expecting our high pressure ratio for the initial stage and later on we are not expecting much pressure ratio that's what is the design strategy okay and here in this case if you look at my tip diameter that's what is constant and if you look at carefully my mean diameter that's what is increasing progressively okay so you can say it is you will be getting higher tip speed at the same time my u mean that means my peripheral speed at the mean station that is also increasing okay so here if you look at this is what is g 17a for that if you look at this is what is my constant tip diameter kind of configuration here at the entry you are having larger area at the exit you will be having lower area okay now what will happen if this is what is the possibility what we know if i'll be having higher peripheral speed or high tip speed it will give me high per stage pressure rise okay and if i'll be getting high per stage pressure rise that means the number of stages required in order to achieve particular pressure rise that will be reduced okay so this is what we can say it's advantage in sense because per stage pressure rise we are achieving to be higher it says in the later stage if you look at so suppose say for this blades if you look at in later stage i will be having smaller blade height that's what is aerodynamic constraint we have discussed earlier also we will be having our growth of boundary layer from casing we will be having growth of boundary layer from our hub and that may be possible in the later stages hold my blade or maybe quarter of my blade or half of my blade that will be covered with this blockage and that's what will not give what pressure rise we are expecting because of formation of losses there that's what we are defining as say secondary losses and that will lead to reduce the efficiency for that particular stage okay suppose if i'll be considering this as a configuration to be fitted in my aircraft we can say that's what is giving higher drag because it is having higher frontal area okay and it is using maximum diameter of my engine now let me tell you say when we are discussing we are looking for compact engine we are looking for lightweight engine or when we are looking for engine to be fitted in a fuselage okay for my military applications there you know we are expecting our per stage pressure rise to be large under that condition this is what will be coming into the picture one more thing we are not major concern of efficiency when we are talking about military application so you can understand this is what is giving good configuration in sense when we are doing our design for the compressor now suppose if we consider say i am having constant hub diameter kind of configuration if that's what is your case you will be getting lower tip speed and you know our mean peripheral speed that's what is going to decrease so this it's what is going to decrease if this is what is your configuration compared to our earlier case we can realize our tip speed that's what is reducing that means my per stage pressure rise what i will be getting that is lower okay and when we are considering this kind of configuration okay so we will be having say this configuration that's what is required more number of stages so it is suggested that's what we can use for high pressure ratio in middle stage of compressors this kind of configuration we can plan for that one major advantage compared to our constant tip configuration is you now we will be having say longer blade that will be coming at the exit stage if that's what is your case you can understand we will be having minimum losses when we are having this losses to be minimum 
my efficiency is going to increase. So here if you look at this is what is a section for Pratt and Whitney 4000 and if you consider for HP configuration they are having nearly constant hub kind of configuration. This is what is a Saffron CFM56 engine for that also in, in order to have this kind of benefit they people they have configured this HP compressor with constant hub diameter. Okay? And this is what will be reducing your production cost also and lower drag that is what is the benefit for your aircraft. Okay. So, we can understand this is also one of the configuration which we can explore. Okay. But the limitation here is in sense of length because my number of stages are going to be large. Okay. So, for military application if you are planning for you need to do systematic calculation for per stage pressure rise. Okay. Now, this is what is a configuration in which I am having my mean diameter that is what is constant. You can see this mean diameter it is constant. Okay. And this is what people used to say it is a most preferred design to add off or to go with say constant mean diameter kind of configuration. Okay. So, it says it allows constant mean specific work input for all the stages that is what is a big benefit. Okay. If you consider we are having tapering of this external surface that is what is going to reduce the engine drag. Okay. Suppose if we consider say constant tip diameter configuration we realize that is what was giving our drag to be more. Here because of this tapering shape we are having lower drag that is what we are getting. Okay. And mostly used for medium size engine with single spool. So, here if you look at this is what is say turbo shaft or we can say turbo probe kind of configuration in which this configuration for axial flow compressor it is considered as a constant mean diameter kind. One more thing the track may not be the mirror image to control the size of the blade height. Okay, so, if we will look at suppose if I consider say this is what is your case, this is what is my constant mean diameter kind of configuration. You can understand in order to accommodate or in order to have proper height of my blade, they are not considering always the mirror image. Okay. So, this is what is the most promising kind of configuration what people they have explored. Now, the question will come, why do not we think of something in sense of combination of these two? maybe constant hub and constant tip diameter with say mean configuration and that is what will be giving us benefit of both what we are looking for. Yes, so we are having that kind of configuration. So, here if you look at this is what is say constant tip diameter configuration and later part that is what is constant hub diameter configuration. So, it says we are able to achieve high work done for the initial stages. Okay. And it does not allow the what problem we are having with say constant tip configuration is the height of my last stage blade. That is what you can get right by using constant hub diameter kind of configuration. Okay. So, it says does not allow the blade to be small in the later stage and work input can be increased by having higher rotational speed. So, this is what we have seen for most of our high bypass ratio engines. Okay. This is what is giving lower drag that is what is of need when we are talking about the application to commercial aircraft. Okay. In commercial aircraft we are looking for the configuration which will looking we are looking for say specific fuel consumption to be lower. We are looking for fuel economy that is where this is of major concern. Okay. And it says it is most preferred for two and three spool configuration. So, this is what is one of the land based power plant that is what was developed designed by G and that is what is having single spool configuration. And if you look at the whole this single spool it has been designed with the combination of say constant mean diameter and constant hub diameter. So, this is also one of the possibility. Okay. So, we can say we are having different kind of flow tracks which are possible 
when we are doing our design and development activity for axial flow compressor. Now here, so if we look carefully, say very first thing what we are doing when we are developing the axial flow compressor is we will be going with our cycle analysis. Maybe by using your pen paper or maybe by using say commercial tools or maybe companies they are having their own code for doing the cycle analysis. After doing that cycle analysis, they are defining or finding with what will be the pressure ratio required for LP spool and what will be the pressure ratio required for HP spool. Okay. Now based on pressure ratio requirement, they will be deciding with the number of stage. Now number of stage decision that is what is very important. You can understand here, suppose if we consider this is what is say having say pressure ratio around 20, let us say. So, you know like for 20 we can go with say maybe 5 stages, we can go with 8 stages, maybe we can go with 10 stages. It is designer's choice. Again the problem will be with the length of the engine. It may not be permitted to go with more number of stages. Length of the engine, weight of the engine, number of components or number of blades required for the compressor that also will be larger. So all these are the constraints. So based on that initially systematically total pressure ratio that is what has been decided. Then after per stage it is been decided with. Now per stage calculation that is what is done. I will be having my inlet pressure, I will be getting my outlet pressure. Based on the continuity, we can calculate what will be my outlet area. Now again for the next stage, so systematically you need to do all your calculation. So it says actual flow track annular area is computed based on mass flow and continuity applied to local flow for each stages. The shape may not come smooth. So you can understand suppose if I am considering first stage, say I have assumed my pressure ratio as say 1.4, I will be getting my exit area to be slightly different. Maybe when I will be going with this next step, so I will be getting zigzag kind of configuration. Now we know in our aerodynamics, we are not permitting any kind of flow obstruction. That means we need to have our flow track to be aerodynamically smooth. Okay, and that is what is based on your you know size overall size of my stage. When I say overall size of my stage, that is what will be coming in sense of my radius ratio, that is what is coming in sense of my aspect ratio. Okay, then next that is what is my pressure ratio, and what aspect ratio as we have discussed, that is what is coming into the picture. So all this configuration together, that is what will be giving some kind of rough idea, rough estimation of my flow track. Now what happens after that, we need to smooth out that track. That means maybe here and there, you need to adjust your radius. So once you are defining or you are finalized with your track, then you will be getting your numbers at the entry and exit and then your design for particular stage that is what will be started with. But the design what I mean is blade design. Okay? So do not underestimate the importance of flow track design. This is what is very important. So in companies, people they are having expertise in such kind of flow track development. They are flow track engineers. Their whole work it is to take care of all this configuration. Let me tell you one more point that is what is say this interconnecting duct or intercompressor duct that is also equally important. As I told my flow which will be coming out from my LP or LP compressor that will be going into LP say HP compressor. And if you consider I will be having great variation in my radius. So, what all we have discussed in module 1 for our diffuser concept, that concept, that aerodynamics, that is what will be coming into the picture. Now in order to do all this calculation, 
people they are substantially using CFD analysis okay and then after they will be coming up with perfect a systematic flow track okay so you can understand I cannot go with having say experimentation at the initial stage okay I cannot make number of flow tracks and then after do the experimentation so computational tool that's what is helping here so once we finalize with that maybe later on you can check with the experimental part and that's what will be helping so the aerodynamics of say axial flow compressor it is not only limited with your blades it is also covering this flow tracks inter interconnecting ducts okay so we need to be very careful when we are doing our design so what all you are deciding in sense of my rotational speed in sense of my peripheral speed that means diameter all those parameters which are very important so when we will be discussing in the next module we will be discussing how exactly we will be discussing for all these aspects now here in this case say if you look at carefully say this is what is most modern kind of configuration so here if you look at this is what is most modern low bypass ratio engine configuration so you can see we are having low, low aspect ratio stage say almost three stages we are having okay and the track if you look at this is what is systematically been designed with constant mean diameter kind of configuration if you look at my say HP spool that HP spool that is if you look carefully that is also of constant mean diameter kind of configuration and as we have discussed this is what is my bypass duct okay here in this case the shape of this intercompressor duct that's what is very important okay so if you look at carefully say initially when you are doing your design you will be getting your flow track like this then later on as per your requirement in order to have good aerodynamic characteristic for say intercompressor duct it may be possible that you may be having some other kind of shape like this so here if you look at for last stage that's what is having other kind of configuration okay so this is what is people they are working at this moment now you know like the fundamentals of aerodynamics that's always will remain with us and we can have rough estimation we can say this is my entry area this is my exit area i'll be having this angle as a you know divergence angle this divergence angle that's what we can calculate based on this equation now let's look at here suppose if we consider this is what is a high bypass ratio engine kind of configuration here i'll be having my great turning that's what is happening but for small elementary area if you look at that's what is satisfying what angle we are discussing so it says my angle that need to be in the range of 6 to 10 degree 6 to 8 degree that's what is a most preferred angle okay now here in this case we have discussed about all different kinds of configuration what we are using for say our axial flow compressor so i'm sure this is what will give some glitch small small initial idea we are moving more towards now aerodynamic design of compressors where the fundamentals of all these aspects are of great importance so thank you thank you very much for your attention thank you